I'm Kreskin Stone reporting from Hallows Point, and you're on the front line. It was three years ago today here at Hollows Point that we were terrorized by the malicious slayings of our unsuspecting neighbors. Baffled police were unable to comprehend that the brutal murders were not only the product of one man's twisted and perverse imagination, but by also one of Hollows Point's own sons. The sick reality of one man's sophisticated plans of bloodlust having been revealed has been concocted and executed in a sanctuary of learning and innocence. As he leered over the trustful youth there isn't any human alive whose morals are properly aligned that could possibly fathom the heinous thoughts crisscrossing through his evil-soaked brain. When the students of Hallows Point High came to class, they became the unsuspecting pupils of one of America's most notorious serial killers, Nathaniel Raber. They thought they were learning biology. Instead, they were getting a course in murder, 101. Daniel Raber left a brutal trail of butchered victims that left detectives playing a desperate game of Monopoly. Only this time when they passed go, they would be collecting a death certificate. The reaction of the town was understandably one of fear and desperation. Initiating a mandatory curfew and locking up their doors tight became a ritual of survival for the citizens of Howells Point. First on Nathaniel Raber's list was the wife and newborn child of Dr. Ian Grayson, a man who in actuality was one of Raber's few, if not only, friends. Their bodies were found mutilated beyond recognition in a single, carnal heap of human remains. Then, Raber's prey began to fall like dominoes in an ongoing marathon of heartless killings. Detective Frank Kate searched desperately to track down the perpetrator of this murderous rampage, but he and his team fumbled through one crime scene after another without stumbling upon a single lead. I myself tried to get an interview with Kate's, but he wasn't talking. Come on, come on. Detective Cates, Detective Cates, there are there any new developments in the Hollis Point serial killings? No comment. Isn't it true that the police department well, doesn't... I told you guys I can't say anything until the investigation is over. No comment. Fortunately, Nathaniel Raber was stopped three years ago on Halloween night, gunned down at the house of Cindy Coleman by Detective Cates himself, concluding his reign of terror. However, the horror didn't end there. More gruesome discoveries were made that brought this unspeakable nightmare to its horrendous conclusion. The very school where the children of Hallows Point attended daily had in fact become a very different type of playground. The basement of the school had been transformed into a dungeon of evil and cruelty. Many of Raber's victims had found a place of display as caricatures of pain and torment. The citizens of Hallows Point were shocked beyond comprehension at the stories, accompanied by pictures of Raber's twisted acts, fueled by some unknown goal and dastardly plan. They weren't random acts of torture, but each brutality seemed to have been meticulously performed to fulfill some unknown end. Like out of some sick producer's mind in Hollywood, these defilements seemed to tell a tale. A search of Raber's home would reveal stacks of books on the occult and other religious readings, Raber seemed to be conducting a comprehensive study of the world's religions. Fat lot of good it did him. On the cusp of these new discoveries, the police were confounded by a new development. The body of Nathaniel Raber had been taken to a hospital, which also happened to have as its resident Dr. Ian Grayson. With a heart broken by evil and driven by revenge, Grayson burned Raber's body with fire that transformed the maniac's corpse into an unrecognizable husk. Justice served, says this reporter. Now, three years later, Hallows Point prepares to celebrate another Halloween, no longer under the fear of Raber's malformed shadow. The school is now closed down and abandoned, after the parents rallied to have a new school erected, free from the taint of Raber's evil. The students are back to their normal day-to-day -day activities and plan to celebrate this night of witches as it is typical of today's youth, clad in different guises and gathered in parties, forming their own drunken covens. A popular costume will be the Raber outfit, 
Children flocked to the stores to purchase their own trench coat and horn-rimmed glasses, the trademarked personification of Nathaniel Raber. Parents seem unconcerned about the idolization of a notorious killer. I don't see any harm in it. They're just playing. They see it on TV anyway. Instead of being afraid of it, they're just making a joke of it. Yeah, that's a hilarious joke. Ha! One man has become notorious himself as a local authority of dressing up like Raber. Around the community, he is known only as the drunken neighbor. Sir, excuse me. Can you give us an interview, sir? What? We'd love to talk to you about Nathaniel Raber. Yeah, Raber. Yeah, let's go, Raber. Everybody's jumping on my bandwagon. Sir, if you like to park your car, maybe we could go chit chat. You know, maybe we should walk. Okay, that sounds All like right. a great idea. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Son of a bitch. Come on, come on back. Watch the dog shit. Sir, what is everyone's fascination with dressing up like Raber? Everyone? I don't know about everyone, but I tell you what, everyone has been jumping on my bandwagon. I started this three years ago. Three. And now you got Raber model kits and the costume plastic trench coats. Buy them at the supermarket. I was the originator. I was the first. You want a beer? Sir, it's eight in the morning. So you want a beer? Sir, how do you think the victim's families feel seeing you dressed up like the Raber? Go ask all the families whose people were killed by Freddy Krueger. You see a bunch of Freddy Kruegers running around. Nobody cares about that. That's all fun and games. But he was killing people. I am a walking, talking, living, breathing, 24-7 memorial to the people who were tragically killed by Nathaniel Raber all those years ago. Sir, what kind of example do you think you're setting for the kids? Oh, hell, man, I love kids. I just, you know, I believe the children are our future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. One thing, uh, one thing about kids is that I get, you know, I go in this chat room sometimes and there's a bunch of little kids around and, you know, they're talking stuff and, you know, just the other day I was at uh, this house, supposed to meet one of them and a guy with a microphone and camera came out too. I didn't, so the kids are our future. I, am I going to be on TV? What is this? Sir, how long do you plan on keeping up this despicable farce? Farce? Buddy, let me tell you something. This is no farce. This is my life. This is my profession. Listen to this. I got a routine, man. I'm taking this on the road. Listen to this. Tell me what you think. It's not easy being a serial killer these days, you know. I'm at an amusement park the other day when I start to get out of here, when I start to kill in this family of four. <laughs> they kick me out of the park for cutting in line. And I tell you what, where have the morals of people gone? You know, the other night I'm in this house killing this family, and when I get to the husband, he says, hey, when you get around to killing my wife, can you make sure you twist the knife a few extra times? Unbelievable, isn't it? <laughs> what? Gosh. Yeah, I remember when finger foods was really finger foods, you know? And yes, finger licking good meant just that. <laughs> Get out of here, I'm not in it. <laughs> and nowadays, everybody wants to be so damn politically correct, you know? Like the other day, I'm strangling this woman in her car. <laughs> and some guy comes up and knocks on the window and says, hey, you should buy her dinner first. I'm like, you idiot. She is dinner. <laughs> 
what? But oh, folks, ding! Thank you, everybody. Hopefully, I've killed you with my jokes. And if not, I still got my knife. <laughs> An industry. You see, Mr. Blackstone? Industry. Go have another drink. That's all you're good for. So a town, once haunted by a mass murderer, now finds solace in emulating him. What's more sick? A man who kills and tortures innocent victims, or a town that imitates him and his acts? You tell me, Hollows Point. You tell me. Maybe we all got a course that year and learned more than we bargained for in Murder 101. It's terrible. <laughs>